This is the future. So I just want to share my initial thoughts about Calervo. I'll be straightforward with you guys. Calervo is a Warframe not short of any offensive technique but somehow lacks the ability to survive in super high levels or while facing enemies beyond steel path. However, this doesn't mean that this problem can't be solved with the right setup which we will talk later. For now, let me everything you need to know about the Warframe. If you are looking for a farming guide, then this is not the video for you. Anyway, you can farm Calervo with the limited time event in Duviri Paradox right now or just buy him in the market if you have platinum and love the things you see in this video. Calervo's first ability is called Wrathful Advance and this is also his subsumable ability which I think will be broken in most melee heavy attack builds that has slash and bleed potential. Well, not just heavy attack though as its buff extends also to fast attacks so probably melee builds that you love to have red crit. The basic of this ability is that when you tap it, Calervo teleports to the enemy and perform a heavy attack strike. When you hold it, it will allow you to have an aiming reticle so you can accurately aim the target for a heavy attack. That's it. But here's the neat part of the ability. It gives you insane critical chance buff that even using a non-crit weapon with no crit mods at all will eventually do red crit if you have scale power strength in your build. And get this, the critical buff is with duration so you can also scale it with duration mods to last longer. The buff will probably usable almost every time with longer duration, and you can just maintain this by simply using the ability. That's infinite red crit for you and I can't stress out the fact that this will be broken for melee builds in some warframes as this is a subsumable ability. Just think of it, you now have the option to build a melee heavy attack for pure, raw power and remove all the critical mods, gladiator trick or even the combat discipline and arcane avenger trick you are doing, and just focus on building for damage and critical damage, then subsume wrathful advance into your warframe to have that instant red crit. The only gripe on this ability is while using it with throwable melee as instead of the usual throw mechanic of the glaive, you will instead teleport to an enemy to do a close heavy attack. So, it's best used with those weapons such as the hate or anything that has pure or power when it comes to heavy attack build. I also have done a couple of tests, and it seems like heavy attack mods do work with this ability and it procs while using this ability. I need further tests though as it's not clear yet since I sometimes get a boost in damage while equipping only killing blow and then, I saw the same happens without any mods. So, take this with a grain of salt until confirmed. But nonetheless, this is an extremely powerful ability for melee builds and I can't wait to try it out as a subsumability. His second ability is called Recompense and this is his primary survivability. Now, when Digital Extremes teased this ability, I already knew what this would be, and it turns out I was right. The ability will give you daggers that float around Calervo and when it strikes enemies, it will restore your health. If you are at full health, then you get Overguard which acts as your second health. I did say that this would be broken, since we now have Overguard for Calervo, then we have Shield Gating but, it turns out Digital Extremes were prepared about this and gave Calervo zero Shield Gating mechanic. So basically, you will rely with your Overguard and health, plus the good amount of armor for survivability. Is this enough? To be honest, it is in Steel Path levels but not beyond those levels. Overguard will just deplete like it's nothing against level 500 or more enemies. The best way to survive with Calervo is to pair his overguard with his armor, plus the adaptation mod and arcane guardian in your arcane slot. This will somehow mitigate damage and allow you to survive. However, you might want to also take care of energy as the only way to get overguard is to cast recompense. Another good method to survive is using the Hera's Q-Brow and go with the full ability build setup. This means you can't use your first ability in here since performing a heavy attack will break the invisibility of Hera's Q-Brow, and the only ability you can perform are Recompense, Collective Curse and Storm of Yuko, which I think is enough to kill enemies as the two other abilities are mostly the source of his insane DPS. And by the way, I almost forgot, the overguard mechanic of recompense does negate knockdowns so yes, you become like an Eximus unit just like I have said on my previous Calervo video. Moving on, we got collective curse which was the ability I was really curious of. It turns out that with the right amount of power strength, like 200 plus percent, you will gain 100 percent damage redirection from this ability. So what does this mean? In the past we got marked for death that can redirect the damage dealt from one target to the rest of the enemies around it, but the brokenness of this ability is only limited to slash builds or those builds that has insane raw power, able to one-shot nuke a room. But now, we finally got what we wanted, 
Collective Curse is the ability I expected it to be, and it redirects 100% of the damage you deal from a cursed enemy, to the other enemies also cursed by the ability. It's duration based, so the ability don't expire in one hit and you can inflict as much pain to cursed targets until they are down and, it's 100% redirection which means the amount you deal to that cursed target will also be the amount you deal from those enemies that are cursed also by the ability. I have said in my Colorvo video that shotguns will be busted with this Warframe because of the collective curse ability and it turns out to be right and shotguns like the Tigress Prime is an absolute unit when used with Colorvo and collective curse. However, this is not limited to shotguns only as any weapons, or abilities that deals massive damage can reap the DPS potential of collective curse. So basically, anything that has high DPS will work with collective curse and can give you the genocidal ability in Warframe. In fact, this pairs well with his ultimate ability called Storm of Yuko. This ability is pretty simple and straightforward. You cast it, and it will rain daggers. Well, this is the ability that Hydroid wanted for a long time. It's like Hydroid's stupid rain ability but it works as it has good hit potential against targets, and its damage is slash which can be spread with the help of Collective Curse. All you need to do is cast Storm of Yuko, then curse enemies and this will just melt enemies in seconds. The ability can only be present in one area, and how wide the area depends on your range mod. However, it's still deadly since an enemy hit by Storm of Yuko then got cursed by your third will spread the damage to other cursed targets. So just like I have said, it's just a press 4 to win ability with the help of Collective Curse. And finally, Colorvo's passive gives him heavy attack efficiency and faster wind up speed which is great for melee heavy attack builds. Overall, Colorvo is a full offensive Warframe that needs some setup, just like the Hurra's Q-Brow or Shade Prime invisibility to survive Steel Path and beyond. He is not short of killing power but lacks some ability to survive at higher levels. His abilities are great and purely offensive, and I still don't know what to subsume here. Probably, I will try a Nourish build for this Warframe later by replacing his first ability and let us see what it will turn out. Just like I have said, these are just initial thoughts about the Warframe and I'm just seeing the tip of the iceberg. More Colorvo videos coming later along with other good stuff from the update. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off.